afternoon. It is my pleasure to introduce to you a, a 2008 alumnus of the College of Music and Fine Arts and the winner of the Concerto Competition in Washington, um, and in all, I said that already, and just a real good guy. Um, he's one Spanish, and he'll be playing for me over the next few weeks. Um, so there's my now. Thank you. Thank you, um, you know, there's some, you know, few, actually two specifically familiar faces I'm seeing in here. But uh, most of y'all, yeah, I don't know, uh, like uh, Dr. DeQueer said, I'm an alumni, and, um, and right now I'm currently uh, studying with uh, Dr. McCabe in Uni University of Washington, uh, where Dr. Murphy is also an alumni of, you know, and um, yeah, so I'm hoping to hear some good music today, and I'll try and uh, be too cruel on y'all, but, <laughs> but anyway, um, first up is, do you have the score with you? Oh, yes. Okay. <coughs> yes. Great. Ah, yes, thank State your name and your, oh. and your year and uh, degree program and what you're playing. Okay, uh, I have a master's in singing and I have a performance major and I've been playing the trombone and saxophone and percussion and fiddle and everything. <laughs> so, so you got it. I'm sorry about this, yeah. I played last night, so. <laughs>
Well, good job, yeah. That's um, like any other Rachmaninoff piece, it's <laughs> really difficult in many different ways, you know, and I think, you know, I think you got like the right um, idea of it, you know, um, and I think that once you, of course, you know, uh, with everybody, you know, as long as the more you play it and the more you get familiar with it, it'll become uh, much more natural. And, um, and as, uh, you know, as a player of Rachmaninoff also, in my own experience, that, you know, playing Rachmaninoff is really hard because it takes, one, a lot of physical, like the toll it takes physically, but also mentally, because Rachmaninoff is very intricate with um, all of his textures, you know, and it's up to us pianists to kind of manage all of these and, um, and at the same time make sure that it's still coherent. And this, is, uh, this piece is no exception, you know. And, um, but first, um, you know, in uh, discussing with you here, um, I want to talk about uh, first like the ending of that piece, you know, um, there's a part where um, there's an obvious uh, imitation of bells. And um, if you could play here for them, just, you know, for two measures, just yeah, right here. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Well, um, to for um, you know, especially Russian um, music, bells really do uh, take play a very significant role in their music, and it usually um, like in when they add like that in their uh, piece, you know, it usually signifies a sort of climax, and before that, it kind of reaches the, um, you know, like it says fortissimo before that, but to me, I think once, you know, that applies, it, I think he, that's where the real climax is, you know, because, you know, in, um, and I think in all, like, especially if you look at um, the pictures I exhibition, a very nationalistic piece for the Russians, um, they, you know, like the big, the very big ending of it, you know, like the finisher, has a lot of bell-like effects. And I think um, to make that really effective, you know, you have to, another thing in terms of management of that texture, keep bringing that out, and also keeping that line, you know, and um, I think the best way to practice that is really take each one apart, you know, um, just for, to, you know, to make sure mentally to, you know, you know how to, like, to shape each one, you know, and, you know, and at the end, kind of like juxtapose all that as it's written in the score. So, um, so let's try right here. The, uh, I'm going try I imagine just um, kind of like a bright bright tone, you know, when you attack those high notes, you know, like you know, very clear, you know. So try again. You know. <laughs> Sounds much better, you know. Like I think it's before. I think you know it's it's easy to get distracted with you know like the inner inner lines, you know, which is you need to you know uh, pay attention to those. But that you know I think that bells tends to kind of um, you know lose its attention, and I think that's really important in that section. All right, um, and also another um, thing about this piece, I've noticed that um, I think you could use a little bit more color in terms of like the dynamic contrast or in the, like, the different sections. And there's different ways to achieve um, like the different colors in, in terms of with the piano. Um, one way is, you know, the way you attack the keys, you know, um, you know like either with your fingers, you know, like the uh, varying the velocity as which you attack the key. And also, and I think it's really a very valuable tool to uh, use is the left pedal. And um, I don't really uh, see you, yeah, exactly, see that. Um, but I would, it's very, um, it's one of those things, you know, like other aspects of piano playing, you know, kind of like doing um, simultaneous things, you know, like rubbing your stomach and your head at the same time. But I think like once you can um, do that, I would really um, recommend you to um, incorporate that because I think a lot of this uh, pe like parts here really calls for it, you know. 
And um, yeah, and I think, like for example, let's try to experiment with that. The um, right here, like for example, in this section, um, it's wrote pianissimo, and and I think you know, I, like I was hearing in this section, you know, uh, kind of like the same kind of colors as in the previous section before, you know. And you know, music is all about contrast, and you, when you're playing something, you try to make it more interesting, you try to, you know, bring out such as much, you know, in order to draw the listener in and keep their attention. Okay, so um, let's try that. And I don't know, just do, um, try a little bit here from here and then try to add a little bit that's left out. So like maybe. <laughs> So you know, it. I think that really kind of um, ups that you know the the in terms of sonority of that you know, especially with that counterpoint going on, and that's very uh, you know Rachmaninoff loves to do that you know, and um, in a way that kind of helps bring this out you know because uh, I don't know just you know you, you kind of have to experiment with it, but with that said, um, you have to play with you can't really uh, adjust plan that out with on one piano. You have to constantly um, play with the left pedal because if you press it too far on um, on a certain piano, it will get like a very uh, tinny effect. So you can't. That's why you know, like you have to you know kind of play with it as you're you know playing performing the piece. You know, like very listen constantly. So um, yeah, and um, I think also. Yeah, and um, and I guess overall throughout the rest of the piece, you know, um, with Rachmaninoff, like there's, you know, with each of the lines, you know, I th I think it will be best to also kind of you know take each line um, accompaniment or you know um, or melodic, and just you know like in your head kind of like sing through it, you know, or at least play through it, and like have like a certain you know, um, you know shape to it, uh, to each one, and um, but. The danger with that is, you know, if you do that, then you know it tends to uh, have a lot of uh, to distract if you try to kind of um, shape each one. That's why you know you have to kind of like manage um, in terms of if we're going to speak simply the volume of you know each different levels of the texture. You know, so um, let's try, for example. In the same spot right here. Okay, let's play the left hand right here just by itself. Um, no, just. Now, um, now try to that play the upper, and kind of like um, just play the just upper line again. The, yeah, the without the chords. Yeah. I would I would do more of you know um, yeah I guess more. I want to say swell, but I guess more variation and you know or wave like you know see. Try to keep the tempo. <laughs> okay, good. And of course, this is gonna be easy. You have your um, the middle, the melody. Like there's um, with that 
line, you know, there, I was feeling very um, downbeat, heavy on that, you know. If you could think more like of that four measure phrase, you know, um, like think, think through the bar lines and into ending there, okay? So. <laughs> Now, that for each of those um, shapes, now this is going to be really the difficult part is trying to add, you know, all everything together with the same shape, mm -hmm. and you know that's, um, and I think that's you know that's really going to really ramp it up, and while at the same time bringing out that line, you know, so try again um, all three, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and you know that's the thing. Like um, that's another, as I mentioned before, a difficult part because you know it, you know it's something too you have to kind of practice and get used to, and um, and it definitely uh, I thought it would sound much better after um, you know getting that at least the clear um, idea of how you want to shape each texture, you know, and um, yeah. So, but yeah, that's um, that's pretty much what you the kind of approach, at least I would take, you know, with um, Especially a piece of as intricate as um, Rachmaninoff's writing, writing. So, but yeah, good job. <laughs> okay. So uh, next is uh, Mendelssohn's uh, Venetian boat songs.
Very nice, very nice. Yeah, um, you know, so I think, you know, like um, Aaron, you know, I think you definitely, you know, it's, you definitely have like the right idea, you know. Um, you know, you have like in terms of the shape of things, you know, and um, of the ideas, you kind of like have good differentiation. I think, um, let's talk about the, because accompaniment figures, mm -hmm. you know, it's definitely much more, um, uh, I guess, florid, you know, in, in this piece. And I think what, at least for me, you know, as a performer, when I, um, you know, have like this really um, complex, you know, uh, accompaniment line, it's very easy to kind of um, uh, let that overpower and distract from the overall melody of the piece. And um, to me, what helps me is, you know, kind of, kind of like compare that or think of that um, as more of like the, kind of like a river, you know, flowing underneath, you know, the, um, and over the, you know, like the bridge that is the melody. Yeah, so, and um, I think what you can think of is really, and another thing, this is um, like, this is another prelude, uh, you know, uh, that, she's playing and it's still the same rule you know approach I would take would apply here in terms of taking just you know that um, accompaniment line and just adding that shape you know uh, and making sure that that does not you know that shape doesn't interfere with what's going on with the um, you know, upper line so let's try again um, you know <laughs> Much better, you know, um, and I think it's definitely it's like I like it's you know I like to me when I take music, you know, it's really um, much more important, at least for me, how um, using getting that counterpoint and really using that as kind of like just um, as an interplay between the two parts, and I think you're you're really doing a good job with it, and um, now um, if you could just apply that throughout and make sure that doesn't you know um, distract, and now I think let's work on the upper line, you know, Russian, you know, especially Russian music or romantic music in general, their lines are very, you know, expansive. And um, a lot of them, um, in, to me, you know, in my own experience, I think it's best to almost just disregard the bar line um, in this case and just think through the bar lines and even uh, rests, you know. Um, I think um, if, if you could just, I think, the, um, you know, what, when you have like this rest right here, you tend to kind of get, um, almost settle in there, you know, and mm -hmm. kind of like cuts off the progression of that line. Mm -hmm. So try that again and feel um, the overarch. I know he put some slurs, but it put it in the context of an overall larger line. Okay, mm -hmm. let's try. Yeah, let's try this again. <laughs> Just play the upper note um, by itself.
Yeah, so when you um, hesitated there, you know, it kind of like broke, you know, like um, broke the flow of things, you know. So try it right here, like let's, yeah, right here. Oh, I'm curious. Uh, huh? Yeah, but um, I th th there was like a sort of uh, break I, I kind of heard there. Okay. Try it? Okay, yeah, sure. Mm, well, yeah, no, I observed the tie too. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Better, yeah, better. Yeah, it's just, um, I don't know, like, with this, uh, kind of this sad, more, more like, um, let's see. Yeah, in, in a way, kind of like, in a way, kind of like, let the, um, I know it's a tie, but make sure that the subsequent note, and uh, like, once you hit a note, it decays immediately. Kind of, um, I guess, you know, what would really help the flow is, if you um, follow the next note that follows, kind of like um, begins with the uh, follows from that decay, you know, from the same thing. Mm -hmm. All right, but um, I think <laughs> you get the idea. All right, now let's try adding the, um, just with uh, just the right hand by itself. That's the that's you know really the um, you know really beautiful you know and yeah just uh, try incorporate that now with like the um, accompaniment. <laughs> the beginning I know the beginning um, notes are on an offbeat, so I know if you could just in a way um, I feel like if you, the way you play that is that's on a downbeat you know so if you could kind of think forward and you know think of. Like that, I just like, um, yeah, I'll be sorry. There you go. Yeah, and it, it, like especially you know romantic music, you know, and a actually you know with any any music, you know, it's always good to um, find you know like where you know um, the structure of the phrase, you know, and um, most you know especially in that in this area, and especially you know like for example um, Brahms, you know, if you take I'm going I'm going to talk about Brahms since I I played it <laughs> last night. Um, his Schoenberg used to say that his uh, like the first composer to uh, disregard like the bar line, like thought beyond the bar line. And I think as pianists, you know, I think we get too visual and get really um, stay within the box that is the bar line. And I think that kind of um, uh, fragments the, uh, the line, the, the phrase, you know, the melodic uh, line from its, uh, you know, from its actual you know, unity uh, as its whole. And I think you know, it's, it's always good to um, at least from either sing or do that kind of exercise, you know, just get that um, idea, you know, because especially Rachmaninoff's music, it's, you know, it's all the activity going on. Um, we try to pay attention to everything that, you know, just the simple things of, you know, shaping that line gets lost. And you were doing a good job uh, this before. Um, I thought, you know, just um, could, you know, really uh, brought it up, and it was, you know, so. Um, 
but yeah, that's you know I, I think everything's um, good, you know, and yeah, so good. So. All right, let's talk about uh, the first one first. Okay. Very nice, you know. I think I like what you're doing in terms of, um, like, in terms of the, the kind of like the, the mood, you know, in terms of just the, um, I don't want to get too, uh, you know, too much into like the, you know, cloudy, vague, um, you know, expressions of it. <laughs> but I, I like what you're doing in terms of the, you know, the shaping of the line, you know, the melody and all that. I think, um, to me, everything sounds um, almost, uh, almost at the same, you know, dynamic, you know. And you know, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna sound like a broken record here. I think a lot could be done by just, you know, bringing out um, at least from the dynamic contrast and the articulations and the, uh, you know, the that he adds into to the score. And like for example, and first I want to talk about um, he put uh, some sort of sword sandos. Here and um, I don't remember in, in the past, you know, I, when I see a sports sound, though, all my all neck reaction just whack, you know, <laughs> without you know, uh, you know, thinking of the context of it. And you know, with every uh, accent, um, you know, or marks like those, you have always have to think about context with um, that it appears in the music. So, like for example, in the um, you know, what the overall dynamic of this piece is, well, what would you say the or overall dynamic? 
So you definitely wouldn't, you know, um, do, you know, like, you know, on that, you know. It's, um, you could, if you could do that, you know, if you want a really jarring effect, but I don't think that's what um, uh, Melson really wanted. So always think, you know, um, just um, that, that kind of context. And also, he, in here, um, when you see those hairpins, that's actually a very debated um, performance practice uh, symbol. Uh, when you see, like, um, especially in Sh uh, Chopin and especially Brahms's music, uh, there was a, a former, a uh, I believe it was Elizabeth Zockenberg, who was, I believe, a student of Schumann, Clara Schumann, I believe. Uh, correct me for my hazy music history days. <laughs> And um, she wrote, I believe, a letter saying like how you know when Brahms you know writes that um, usually implies kind of a rubato without, I mean, a, a sort of rubato, but without the making up of the time. You know where you kind of like um, take the time you know into the climax, and you kind of like hurry up to make up for it. Well, with that you know at least for Brahms' sense, you know it's um, you don't have to do the making up you know um, of that time that you pretty much stole as the term rubato means. So um, if you could think more just as if you're um, at least, you know, an approach, you know, you could always experiment with these, you know, um, and with your own interpretation. Like when you see those, kind of like think of um, like taking a big breath, you know, in, into that high climax, you know, and then um, just like as if you're exhaling after that, you know, and I think so let's try right here today. Oh, let's let's actually go in into it. You know, uh, the, the beginning. Yeah, just, yeah, just right here. <laughs> if we're gonna um, think, I know this uh, doesn't give you much room there, but then use like the, um, the coughing the material to um, help set that up, you know, so. You know, um, you know, it's, it really does. You know, with that kind of stuff, it really does take um, uh, time to kind of just you know experiment with that. You know, all right. Uh, so, first of all, let's um, try to let's focus on trying to do the ver the. I, I think one of the hardest things to do is trying to like convey the uh, variations between piano and pianissimo. You know, it's um, because a lot of people, you know, they you know when they play piano, you know. They think immediately soft, and you know when they see pianissimo, it's like they have nowhere to go. So it does; it t really does take a lot of um, uh, planning out, you know, beforehand. So let's try going into this. Um, that's a good place to start. Let's try. Okay, let's try piano, piano, not too, not too soft. Give yourself some room. Okay. better, you know, 
And um, I think, especially um, in certain certain halls, you kind of like have to um, really kind of exaggerate these, you know, uh, these changes in order to kind of make these known, you know. Um, so um, I think you can now work on that later. Um, and another thing is, in this edition, he, there's a lot of like pedal markings in terms of where, you know, um, pretty specific in terms of like the line and then the, the lift, you know, I'm sure you have seen that. And um, how do you uh, treat those? Do you, you know, like when you press the, um, depress the pedal, do you, do you only lift right there? Is that how you? In terms of the pedal, like, you know, how, how do you um, treat that? Okay, but pretty much before it hold it down immediately. See that um, you know with that if with that kind of approach, you know it's kind of um, difficult to do that, especially with you know he writes these um, like without the pedal, it would sound like that. Okay, now depress the pedal. Okay. So as you can see, that, that articulation is lost if you hold the pedal down. And, with, and that kind of makes, uh, makes me believe how that um, you know, implied that you, know, you have to do some, um, maybe not hold it immediately da all, always down, you know, but kind of um, lift it up in order to get that um, articulation. You know? And I think he was uh, pretty fussy with that because you know, he does that, um, you know, write, marks that down in the score uh, throughout. So if you could think, um, you try. So. <laughs> Sorry. As you can see, it's pretty hard <laughs> to do, you know. So um, try. If you uh, do it without, do it without the pedal. Uh, right, starting right here. Okay, now try um, now do that again, and try with adding, adding the um, just don't think of like holding the pedal down. Just think of adding more sonority to the uh, to that sound. Okay. So you know, yeah, it's it's definitely something um, to work out, but yeah, I think um, with pedal markings, you know, I, I always try to keep um, you know keep like such symbols, you know, um, like uh, as kind of like a advisory, you know, make sure that I don't sacrifice the articulation um, that he writes with it. Okay, all right. So <laughs> I think enough of that. Let's move on a second. Okay. 
Now this, um, you know, like as we talked before with the, um, the Rachmaninoff preludes, um, I think I, I love what you're doing, especially with the, uh, the, the right hand the melody. It's definitely, I love, I love the shape that you're adding into that. Um, and I think this piece is definitely no exception to that, you know, in terms of how important um, the left hand is in terms of, you know, keeping that as an um, equal partner in, in terms of supporting that, uh, that right hand, you know. Um, so by that, I mean, I think could show more attention to the shape of that left hand as you're giving to that, uh, you know, what you're doing beautifully with the right hand, you know. So, and a lot of it is, um, another thing we ha I haven't really talked about before, is uh, talking about how the release of the note is as important, sorry, <laughs> as important to, uh, as the striking of it, you know. And I'm hearing a lot, you know, with the, this, you know, what you're doing here. You know, and you know, when you have a short, the short note, you know, especially in context with um, the legato, legato, um, you know, uh, attacks of each one, is will really draw the attention to um, the uh, to the listener, and that's what that's what I felt um, a lot, you know, through um, with uh, you know while listening to this, you know, and that was really like the main thing I would like to fix, you know, in this piece. You're doing a great job in terms of um, you know uh, with like your idea with it, you know, and I, th I could really tell that you had a clear vision. Now. Um, again, you know, let's try, you know, like with the intent of just shaping, you know, think of like the left hand as a melody. Just play the left hand. Part. Yeah. So yeah, I'm hearing a lot. Um, you know, like the, the C sharp, you know, is very, you know, um, I think you're anticipating the big jump, you know, down to the F sharp. And I think w as a result, you're, uh, you're, you know, you're kind of almost panicking and just like hitting that, you know, so, so think of it as just, you know, make, do it again this time, but um, uh, think of it as a tapering, you know, taper that phrase, you know, and then that's what, yeah. Mm -hmm. Keep the tempo. There. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's try. Um, and the. Um, we should probably get this show down. Oh yeah. Sure. Okay. Well, definitely. All right. Okay, no problem.
Oh yeah, um, I think you know that's you're you're actually pretty close to you know um, I think achieving you know a really um, good level with with this piece you know and um, <coughs> let me ask you something like the left right hand part um, a continent or more important than the left hand you know well, left, hand's yeah, left hand yeah so my comment pretty much is pretty not far from if I was gonna say play it perfectly mm -hmm. uh, but just you know play you know ideally throughout uh, one. One's attention should really be, you know, uh, or the listener should be really honed in on the left hand throughout, obviously, with the uh, melody. And you're doing some great uh, finger work, you know, and um, I think what would really make your uh, job easier is uh, eliminating a lot of, like, the motions um, that could, especially in a piece this long, with, you know, like the tiniest motion will be exaggerated throughout, you know, uh, you know and that's really going to set you back. Um, and with that said, have you hear, heard uh, Richter? Um, have you seen the uh, YouTube video? Uh, yeah, okay, well, Richter, you know, it's very, uh, it's hand, fingers almost just don't leave, you know, uh, the keyboard. And, you know, um, and I, I've noticed, you know, it's like sometimes your, your pinky and, or just fingers would just be that high, you know. <coughs> and, um, and which is fine, you know, I guess for the first page, if that, you know, <laughs> yeah. But you know, you try, you just try to eliminate, you know, uh, as much unnecessary motions, um, you know, to in order to, you know, like one conserve your energy, and also just save, you know, your your equipment, you know, uh, from being injured. And uh, yeah, this the this set is uh, this etude, you know, is uh, renowned for uh, injuring a lot of <laughs> uh, people, you know, by you know really spending too much uh, or tensing up too much, you know, so. Um, but first, I do want to um, ask you though. Um, I love what you're doing the uh, beginning, you know, like the first uh, four measures, you know, uh, especially like the the third and fourth. It really sounds almost just like a chorale, you know, like I definitely was very choral like. But um, the melody, um, would you say like would stop right here or here at the E or at the E sharp? Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, um, if I didn't have the score, I would say that you know, on well, the way you played it, you know, um, it could is you know. When you know he, um, he, I think the way he wrote it, which is. Definitely, this is secondary, you know, my interpretation. So that's another, you know, thing, you know, just a little detail uh, I'd like to point out. So. Exactly, yeah. So um, don't get too much caught up too much in the details. <laughs> yeah. But um, but first of all, that's definitely beside uh, the point here. The, the rest of the uh, etude follows, you know, afterwards. Um, I think the main parts that um, you tend to uh, really the melody in the left hand gets really uh, uh, covered up is when it gets to the bass, you know, and you have to be very careful with the bass uh, area of the piano because one, the uh, strings, you know, are much longer and, you know, it tends much, uh, you can't, it's much easier for all the tones to kind of blend in together. So, um, and that's, I think you kind of have to compensate, like, and make sure that you don't pedal too much because that's really, um, especially when you get down there. So um, let's try. Um, so. That's a good place to start for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good. Yeah, I think um, uh, that, was, that was much better, you know. And I think um, I still, you know, I think it's still kind of a, I know it's really a, a, lot of, a lot of stuff going on. And I think you're, you're doing the, the shape, you know. And I think it, it's just, um, you know, you can't really do much because it's, you know, it's uh, 
the, in terms of where it is in the register of the piano. But you can um, compensate by either just like try to play, like think of that as um, soft, you know, like the right hand is like marked as pianissimo and then left hand, you know, as and play it left hand only. Good. No, yeah, 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 definitely. You know, and with that, you know, you kind of uh, still held the, you know, the shape of the right hand, you know, and I think it was, um, it really, you know, was even better at that time, you know, and um, let's see, there's, there's another part where, I think, hold on, do we have enough? Where, how long does this go? Um, well, <laughs> just about five minutes, probably. Oh, five minutes? Okay, well, real quick. <laughs> Yeah, so I think there's one. Ah, I should have marked it down. Yeah, so that's. Oh, well, I'm sorry, I forgot. But yeah, that, um, yeah, but pretty much, you know, just try to keep the vitality of the um, the left hand. Now, because I think you know, I'm, like the stuff I'm saying is really all just like details, and I think you realize that, you know, um, just make sure, you know, um, it's really an A2, so just uh, make sure one keep the uh, you know your motions you know at a minimum you know and um, and keep while well, at the same time um, pay attention to the right hand but you know like don't make the audience uh, pay attention with you in a way <laughs> that's what I'm saying so in other words yeah good job so. thank you all right thank you thank you for playing <laughs> but if you, if you but might want to come yeah, yes, for your yes, own definitely. purposes, if we could get two copies, one that we could give to him, to Gabriel, sure. and then one that we could keep in the piano library, mm -hmm. that, would be, that would be. Um, what office do you want to bring that in? Uh, <laughs> just the college office and tell them that the, uh, our name. 